Okay, so first of all, I just want to apologize for uh, uh, the way I come across because I don't really like the public speak very much. <laughs> but um, this was just too cool to not say something about it. So, anyways, this uh, this is Amiga Transformer software that came out uh, somewhere a little bit after the Amiga came out in '85, um, and I believe that it was before the actual 8088 XT. Um, side cart that was a full functioning PC that you plug into your Amiga 1000. Pretty cool. That was hardware RAM. This is all software RAM. Um, so I'm going to pass this around. So when I was originally looking for um, kind of a little quick backstory, um, I belong to a couple retro groups. Big surprise there. Um, so basically, a buddy of mine brought in an Amiga 1000 or 2000, and he brought in this drive. And I thought, you know, I've never. Um, I don't ever remember seeing a five and a quarter inch disk drive for an Amiga. Started doing some research and come to find out that it was like it was used for um, basically to run um, for business people or whatever people worked in an office to run certain software that they were using at the time in their offices. So if they had an Amiga at home and didn't have a PC, um, it kind of gave them a way to just run software and use software at home that they were using and, and go back and forth with at their offices. Um, so in the front of that book, that was just some of the, it says, that's kind of some of the software that they made usable for, um, uh, to run. And so it's like, I'll just go through this real quick. There's DBase, Lotus, one, two, three, Multiplan. Multi-Mate, WordPerfect, um, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. Um, general ledgers, accounts, payable, stuff I've never even seen before. Um, and then some IBM filing system, writing assistant, so on and so forth. So um, okay. anyway, so it's kind of basically what, what your business person would be using. Um, so anyways, I'm, I'm doing this from a cold boot, just to kind of show you the whole process. Uh, I haven't figured out a way to run it on a non-modified computer. So you're do this is completely old school. I think this is Kickstart 1.1, okay. original version, um, so that it, so it actually is able to see the software. So this is going to be a little bit boring, but hey, a lot of retro for us retro people that are used to it or whatever, kind of cool, kind of eclectic. So um, we're going to turn this thing on, pop in the Kickstart, but I can't run it. I haven't figured out a way to run it on. Um, a modded system that has more memory and everything in it because it has to it has to see the disks it has to see the the process and something in it so that it the trend by the time it gets to the transformer which is this magic software that does the the magic for it to work um, so I'm gonna power this thing on I think I'm gonna don't have this on yet this is my little drive and kick it on <laughs> Come on. There we go. Oh, the sound of that disc. <laughs> so we got the kickstart in there now. That's going to ask for the workbench. Hey, <coughs> put in a workbench disk. Hey, one one. Woo <laughs> um, okay, so now I put in the transformer. For some reason, sometimes it will ask for it need to re-insert the, the, re the workbench. Sometimes it doesn't. I'm not quite sure it's part of the way I'm doing the process. But anyways, here's our magic disk that does the software PC emulation. Pop it in here. Open it up. And so there's a couple of different things. There's the preference, which I'll show you guys really quick, the preferences. 
Um, and this is the actual software. Um, so let me sit down so I'm not in anybody's way. But um, basically, you have an options menu. You can change different things. The disk menu basically tells the computer what what drive to see first and the order of the drives. And I think it's set right. Yeah. So DF0 is going to be your main. So I've got it set for one, which is going to be the A drive. Um, that one I think is B. But anyway, um, so it just basically um, tells what drive order to do and how to set it. Um, go escape to get out of it. Your video menu um, gives some options for cursor display, so on and so forth. Um, for some reason, even if I mess with the color um, and wanted to run like in color mode or whatever, it comes out green monochrome. I have that monochrome, so haven't quite figured out why. Even if I so even if I change it, it just it just goes right to mono. There's probably something I'm sure something I'm doing wrong. Um, then you can mess with the color menu. This is kind of cool. So if I went through this and went down the the list that it has of the options available, it kind of changes this according to how it's set for your red, green, blue. Um, but again, I think that's more just set for. It kind of integrates with the actual screen so that you'll, it'll change from your regular. So anyway, we'll go back. You can increase it little by little, mess around with it. Um, we'll escape out of that. The memory menu, which is kind of interesting. You can kind of adjust this to how much per memory that you want. I always keep it default. Um, I haven't tried messing with increasing it because um, I think it's only going to read what you have anyways. So and I think this is set as 512 um, the way I have it set. So um, Attachments. Uh, if you want to use a mouse, light pen, joystick sets. And again, when I, even though it's set a certain way, when I get in, and you'll see it once I get into the, 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 DOS, the DOS screen, um, the PC screen, it doesn't, it'll still have the settings that are different. Again, I'm not sure why. And then, of course, your monochrome, which is all it seems to read is green. So, anyways, let's get to the cool thing. And that is how it interacts in software to run your DOS. So, your preferences are set. We load the NEGA Transformer software. Here's our screen. Ooh. Yeah, I know. Uh, um, and again, like I was showing you guys the settings and stuff. See how it says it, it holds the settings for like what's drive A. Of course, this is drive A. That's B drive. And I have zero off, so this one won't read anymore, I don't think. So, um, so anyways, this is kind of cool, which I never remember when I'm working um, working in the, in, the, in the DOS emulation. But you just hit escape to return back to Mega DOS. So okay, now we're going to hit return to start DOS. This is DOS 3.2.1, and I think it came originally with DOS 2 something. I'm like, oh, I like got a couple Commodore Colt discs or whatever PC discs. I'm like, oh, let's just see if it'll work. It did, which was kind of cool. So we insert the disc, hit return, and it's going to load DOS. And I actually, um, when I had this work in the, about a, a couple weeks ago, there's your internet date, and here we are. Woo. So, of course, let's look at that. Let's look and see what's on the disk, our DOS disk, all right? And there you go. So, um, what was I going to say? I did a backup. So I. I do many backups because, you know, old disks, whatever. So I uh, thought, oh, I'm just going to do a backup of this disk. And so the disk I'm using right now, I actually backed up through this doing disk copy. Cool. We're familiar with that. So it went back and forth. But anyway, um, yeah. So you're in DOS. Can I ask software a question? The, yeah. So the manual shows when it gives a little uh, 
output. It was just just at a text, not as a screenshot of what the boot boot up looks like. Mm -hmm. They mentioned IBM DOS, which I thought, oh, that's interesting. Now I see you've got Microsoft DOS there, because that's something you can swap out, or is that what it came with? The one um, that you have. I believe um, no, the one it came with. The, the one I have is just a newer version of what I pulled from a common Colt Basic or Colt DOS, or which is I think just IBM DOS. Um, but that's good to know. I did not know that. So, yeah. uh, but I'm always liking to push the limits of stuff. So I'm like, ah, DOS two, okay. So I got a ver uh, Let's just see. You know, why not, right? Why not? Sure. So yeah. So I'm not even sure if you can go higher. Who knows? I, I don't know. I, I I'm sure you can't get all the way to six. I don't even know if you get to five. But I might try five. But I'd have to find a to find a disc version of it. Not a not a um, three and a half inch. But yeah. So basically. That's it. I mean, there's software in here I could load, but I just wanted to kind of show you guys. I think this is the coolest thing. Um, it's also, you can also, for those who want to use, have, and have this drive and want to use it, to mount it, so to be, to, to be seen in the Amiga um, operating system, there's a way to do that. There's a couple, in fact, when I went looking for this, all I could find was how to mount the drive, you know, and it runs at like 440K, so if you wanted to do that, you could do that. But that my interest was in like, okay, I want to see how this, how you can run PC software, you know, certain ones at least in 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 a in a um, uh, running through software, you know. Um, Very cool. Yeah. yeah. So it is really, really, really cool. Um, people are asking, well, can you play games? I'm guessing you could probably do text stuff like Zork or something like that. Anything, something simple. Simplistic like that. Again, I'm not sure why it just turns out to just be that color, even though you set it, it gets set like. I just think maybe that's a limitation of the, of the software hardware. I'm not sure. But anyways, that's um, that's pretty much it. Unless you guys have more questions, I just I think it was cool. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thank you. Cool. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank guys. I think they just read 360. I think it's 360, yeah. Five and a quarter, 360. Um, I, well, you know what? I haven't tried. That's a good question. I haven't tried to load to see if I can. No, you know what? It could probably load. I'll have to look into that, actually. That's a good question to see if I can load. Um, well, because this is a different, it's an Amiga drive, so it's going to run, what, 880? Well, so I'm not sure if it would... Well, the Amiga format is 880, but I don't remember if the hardware... So the floppy media is compatible. Yeah. The drive, maybe not. Yeah, I'm thinking that it's, you can only use this drive at a 360, would be my guess. Yeah, it's probably, it's hardware limited. I couldn't imagine, because it wouldn't, it wouldn't know what to do with this. It doesn't, it will, it's not going to trans, I don't think it's going to translate this drive into being a, a, a three and a quarter, or three, 3.25 IBM drive. So yeah, it's going to, it's just going to see, it's just going to see that. You can mount it. You could mount it as another drive, and I think they runs it at 440K, which is odd. Which I'm guessing you could use a, at that point. What did Commodore run? A double sided, double sided, double density disc, a 360 block or whatever. I think that that was what they used. They could format it, but there's a couple of videos out there about it. Um, I've never seen a software Yeah. Yeah, so that's why that's why I was like when I was watching the videos, I'm like, well, why would I want to? It's kind of cool to do that and then format it and use it, but I don't even think it saves the settings. So you actually have to go back and you have to you have to remount it, and there's like a you know a bunch of code to put it to do that in Amiga DOS if you want to do it. So it doesn't even hold it because that's just in temporary in temporary memory. So if you, I guess if you want to to do it that way, but I, that wasn't what I was interested. in. I was interested in okay, how does the software run? To, to, to so, run DOS stuff. So is Workbench still running, or did it reboot and it's now running DOS? It's just running DOS through that tran through the transformer okay. software. Okay. That says if I it escape now, was it escape? I could go back to. Is it replacing a portion of the Kickstart in memory with? 
you can transformer software, and so everything is now different. Because I saw it go through when it booted into DOS, it went through the low fi of doing like initialization. You saw it go gray, and a brighter gray and white, and it went through DOS. Like the same thing that you'd see when you're booting in a workbench after a software release. So if you want to get back to I know there are it said I just hit X, it said I hit escape, but it's not, uh, escape would, I would think, would be intercepted inside DOS. Yeah, it's not, so, I'll have to go back and try it again, but it's not, I thought it was escape and it would get me back in, into DOS, but at this point I'm just going to have to do a restart. But, it's a, but it does change, it, what it does, it does, it, it it of course works with the Amiga software, but at one, but at a certain point, it says, "Okay, transformer software take over." So then it kicks. Then it then it'll, once you once you load that transformer software, then it'll kick into. It changes it. So, but I, I think if I hit escape, it should have gone back to DOS. But I might have hit the wrong key. But anyways, yeah. Um, this software is very specific to this hardware configuration. It's not something you can do with some modern hardware software. It's very specific to this Games on um, I think it's very specific to I think it's specific to 1000. Yeah, on a non um, on a non modded 1000, like a straight. Yeah. So I was lucky. I got all. I got this, and I got you know what I basically would have came with. Uh, this of course he bought later, but I have the disc, the manual, and all that stuff that came with it, and all the like 1.1. But as far as I know, it can't run on um, anything but a non-modded original Kickstart workbench, so that it can, so the transformer drive can read, um, disk can read, read it and read the hardware like it's supposed to. Because I tried it on, I have one of those Pastiero or whatever you call it, and I was using one three. But I'm like, oh okay, and then as soon as I hit the restart or tried to hit a disk. I could get all the way to to it, but once you tried to load transform software, it just it wouldn't load. It wouldn't kick to that screen to then tell me to insert the DOS 3.2. So yeah, but it is. I just think it's cool. I might I might I'm mess with the idea of like finding Zork or something like that. I'm sure it probably would run because it doesn't have any high end. Doesn't doesn't look for anything high end to, to do anything with it. So. Anyway, yeah. So thanks, you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you.